So speaking of dumb, you have a cyberpunk review to do. I do, actually. So ladies and gentlemen. I'm like, I can't wait for that segue. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, uh, yes, I've been talking about cyberpunk for, I feel like it's been months now, and I finally beat the main campaign, and I'm about 80 hours into the game. Uh, So I've completed it, rolled credits, and so I thought I'd kind of come to you guys with an untimely review. We did sort of an in-progress one, but I feel like now is the time. We basically covered your journey. Yeah, basically, I can kind of watch my whole journey through Cyberpunk now through this podcast. Uh, So yeah, I thought I'd give you guys an untimely review. As you guys know, we are too poor and not influential enough to be able to get games on time and get them to you in time for reviews. So we come to you with our reviews when we're done. In this particular instance, I just finished Cyberpunk, so I thought I'd give you my thoughts on it. Cyberpunk. It's a great game that has a very tragic story, and so... I'll start by saying, first of all, I love Cyberpunk. Is it a flawed game? A hundred percent. I definitely think that it got a lot of bad publicity because of the way it launched. I think the way that the state that that is in now is not perfect, but I think it's acceptable enough that you can enjoy it. The way I kind of associate it now is I think of it as a equivalent to to Fallout. So Fallout, you know, we always kind of laugh at Fallout and Bethesda games being sort of you know, glitchy and problematic. And I think that cyberpunk is about at the same level um, of, of where a, a Bethesda game gets launched. It's not acceptable. It's not, you know, perfect, but it is functional. On it. And I kind of feel like the hype for cyberpunk has kind of been its detriment. I think if we had lower expectations and it was released in the state that it currently is in, we'd kind of be like, okay, yeah, this is, you know, buggy, but it's acceptable from what we're used to for games. Like, like I said, Fallout. That being said, there is an awesome game here. The story, I really liked it. I felt that um, it was paced well. Like the, the One of the aspects that I was kind of disappointed with is that the game is a lot shorter. I think I probably could have gotten through the main quest in about 20 hours if I had just beelined it. But I think that would be a disservice. One of the things that I really like about Cyberpunk it, or and CD Projekt Red in general is the way that they build missions. And it's very rarely is it just filler, garbage go collect five this or whatever it's typically you know there's some sort of characterization there's something that progresses the story and so i played a lot of the side missions and the side missions i think are the best part of the game so you've got a bunch of different characters that you can build relationships with and form stories with and i felt that that really contributed towards the main story so my character had i I, i'm not going to go into spoilers or anything but my character was a um street kid you know kind of raised in the slums and kind of you know running with gangs and everything. And by having these character moments with other characters and doing their side quests, like he had a full character progression throughout the game that where I ended was different. And I thought it was really interesting that they were able to kind of weave that narrative that kind of felt like there was a character arc for him. And it wasn't just here. I started at a, and I'm still there. Like there's a whole bunch of different ways it can go. And I thought that the story while short was really good. And I feel that the side quests and all those sort of activities even enhance that on top of it. So when you do those character stories, it really adds to the story. Gameplay wise, I think the gameplay is really good. I like the fact that, you know, the gameplay feels smooth and I I was rolling with pistols the entire time and I never once felt that I was um, under armed. I typically find that when I'm playing with pistols in games that it kind of feels like I'm using a pellet gun at a, you know, in a war and it kind of sucks. But I felt I was able to play with pistols as a, you know, full character development and it was perfectly fine. The hacking is awesome. The key issue that I have with the game progression is that I feel like it's very hard to come across money and to get points. So I never actually even maxed out my entire skill tree. And I probably went halfway through the game without actually like doing all the modifications of the weapons one because I didn't realize how it fully worked. But also I felt that it was really hard to come across money and kind of get those things built. So I didn't really use a lot of the cybernetic stuff as much as I would like to. I still did. And I was very much a pistol wielding I, I literally played it as a cyberpunk, so pistol wielding, hacking kind of character, and it was fun. But I kind of wish I had more opportunities to do more. Um, in terms of performance, um, the sound is is good. I I thought that you know it was, it was adequate. I kind of felt that you know I don't really remember the soundtrack too much, so it wasn't really that great. But I felt like um, Keanu Reeves kind of doing his role like was the best part of that game, and like the voice acting was good. Um, but kind of underwhelming, nothing super um, noticeable there. And the performance, like I said, it is kind of problematic. Like 
at moments I'm like, this looks great. This is, you know, I really like how this looks. The aesthetic is really awesome. There is definitely a great art direction in the game that is hindered sometimes by the performance. And so there was clipping. There were times where, you know, characters were janky. Basically, like what you would expect in a Bethesda game. And so it took away from the aesthetics of the game, but I generally really liked it. So I would say, yeah, if you're interested in it, go play it. If you can hold off and wait, there is definitely a game worth exploring once, you know, it's at a level that you're comfortable with. But I think it is a game that, you know, is worth it, it's unfortunate that not more people have had a chance to try it and may not get a chance to try it. It is a fantastic game with a good story, and I'm excited to see where the, the game ends up. Um, I do think there's some potential here, and I do think that it's gotten at this point a bad rap in terms of what the game is like now. But I understand where it was before, and that is definitely warranted in how it's felt. So I was going to ask, like, if you got this game as is now at the launch, how would you have felt? Like, without any of the baggage, how would you have felt about this game? Yeah, if you're coming, if you're coming in cold with no sort of preconceived notions or anything... I think you would be okay with it. You would be like, this is kind of, it, it feels more like a double A sort of game. It doesn't, it doesn't feel broken. It so it still feel needs like some it is... work, but it's, it wouldn't be like a deal breaker probably. Exactly. Like if, if you're interested in this, you'd be like, okay, like this is, it's no buggy than like other games would be. Like I've had some crashes here and there. It's, it's not to say that it's perfect and I'm not trying to um, excuse it. Like there are problems with the game, but it is not detrimental to the fact that, you know, so it's acceptable at this point, really. It is. Yeah, I would like to see them develop it more and fix more of the problems. It is not going to live up to the expectations that people had for it. But I think if you come in just looking for a game to play, this is not an unplayable game. This is a, a, a really fun game that you can see had a lot of potential and there's a lot of things that maybe got cut. And I think we've seen that. We've seen like on the internet this week that people have been finding like parts of the game that were built that got cut. And so I think it's one where the scope was too large and they had to rein it in and you can see that and it's unfortunate but i think for what what is there if you come in cold without you know all that background knowledge of what the launch was like it's it's a fully acceptable game and if they wanted to they could keep adding to it i mean no man's sky is still getting new content so you never know if they really believe in the, in it and they really want to see what they can get out of it they could still like slowly add to this yeah and this is what I, something i would like to see like the world that they built is awesome like all the different, you know, like areas and communities, like it's a it's a world that I am very interested in. And I really like and I would almost like to just see DLC where you can just go in and do different sort of smaller stories. Yeah, I would really love for, for a lot of games, especially open world games, because it would work best for it, that companies would have like a small team that all their job was is for the next five years to just slowly make like just tiny little things to add into it. it doesn't even have to be like, like comic books. Yeah, like, it doesn't even have to be, like, overly, like, elaborate paid DLC. It can be, like, hey, two bucks, this unlocks this tiny little corner of the map with, like, five new missions that, like, adds an hour. Mm -hmm. Like, even yeah. just something to come back to. Like, that, that'd that be kind of neat. And, ob and obviously a team to always have on the side, too, to, like, any, bug, like, just remaining bugs still. So that way, whatever the next project is for the team, they're all busy doing that, and you have this tiny core that all they're doing is just either making a few tweaks here and there, just making sure everything's still working fine, or just like making some tiny assets. I'm not talking skins because that's cheating out on it, mm -hmm. but like just a little bit of transformative content, just to, just to make that city even more bustling. Because the problem with so many of these games, especially ones that have these big cityscapes, is that there are so many buildings with nothing to do in them. So yeah. it would be pretty cool over time. And GTA was good for this with with their map, and that's obviously why you know they've kept making content for. It's why it was a big deal with the new heist that they came out that it actually brought a new island to the map because normally what they've done is just keep adding little bits to the map that already exists. You know there are so many ways around it, and it would be really cool to see more games like that get the treatment where once it's done, like a year after it's done, and they're done like bug fixing, they just leave it, and it's time for the next thing. It'd be nice to have like a game of that ilk. Just have a slow base so that anybody that comes to it later down the road is suddenly getting this crazy good deal. And at the same time, people who played it way back at the very beginning can come back to it two, three years down the road. And yeah, sure, it might be adding a couple extra hours to a play they've already done, or they really love the game, go back and play a new run through and you get all this new stuff you never knew existed before. Yeah, and that's that's totally where I'm sitting right now. Like I... I finished the game and I loved it and I I'm going to play it again. I, I want to play as a corpo and like the role playing aspect was the best. Like I was a street kid. I didn't, I didn't fuck around with corpos. Like they were, 
they were the enemy and I was a man of the people with like my fellow like street kids. But I'd like to play around where I'm like corporal and I've got like my head held high and I look down on those people and play it as a totally different way. And I feel like that's one of the beauties of the game. But I'm I'm done the game, but I'm not done with that world and I'm not done with that sort of genre. And I'd love to explore it more. So take that as like an endorsement of what the game is like and that I'm I'm done, but I'm not quite done, if you know what I mean. Yeah, that's awesome. So and any I know you haven't played yet. Is there any other kind of questions? I'm not going to go into spoilers or anything, but like. Any other questions? No, because I mean, at this point, like I said, I'm still waiting for the next gen update. So I'm sure at some point CD Projekt Red will give me that information when I need it. So, yeah, no, I think I think it'll be interesting to see what the next gen looks like. But I mean, it doesn't look terrible on the PS5. It's not it's not Um, even the ground. I just I want to know, like when they've had a pretty adequate like like if as soon as it's back on the PlayStation Store and a next gen versions out, that means they put some significant work into it. So that's where I kind of go as my baseline of all right, this is probably at least a like more acceptable game to play now. See, I, I think that the patch 2.2 or 1.2 does fix probably 50 to 60 percent of the problems. Yeah, there it's just ideally issues. like let's assume it's the end of the year is when like mm-hmm. PS5 versions out. Maybe maybe yeah. it's March. I don't know. Like yeah. whenever that is, that's where my brain goes. OK, so you not only have had all this time to fix a chunk of your bugs, but now you've made it so that it's taking advantage of the SSD is taking advantage of the hardware. It's going to look a little bit better. That's everything I want. And it would probably be 60 frames too, which is a double plus for me. So that's like everything that I could ask for. The game's probably by then got a, a good enough amount of fixes in there that I'm probably not going to see significant crashing, all that jazz. Maybe there's even some fun like little additive stuff that they put in there like slowly over time. You never know. So yeah, this is definitely a game that regardless of when you get into it, I would highly recommend checking it out. So yeah, I'd give it probably... 7.5 if i was an average person i really liked it and i was obsessed with the world so i'd give it like 8.5 but that's that is if you're listening to me and you're dying to play cyberpunk and you love the cyberpunk genre and you want like a good rpg story like it's an 8.5 if you're just you know generally just a gamer and you're just interested in checking it out probably more of a 7.5 yeah 